Adam here from Tested in my cave, next to my friend Ben Eady, maker, engineer, and chainmail enthusiast. This is not something yes. I knew about you. Well, it's, uh, I don't know, who. What, what boy doesn't like armor? Indeed. Okay, so I'm wearing my personal chainmail coif. I commissioned this a few years ago from an incredible maker. Oh, it's heavy, even though it's aluminum, uh, but chainmail is famously laborious to make. Uh, and when my friends were making the Lord of the Rings films at Weta Workshop, they started by making their chainmail out of PVC plastic. I don't know if you know this. They literally bought PVC uh, uh, electrical conduit right. and made tiny little slices and then hand assembled all the chainmail for done the props, first I... two movies. They literally, my friend Luke said that the chainmail team had no fingerprints at the end of each production. They probably didn't have a soul either. <laughs> <laughs> but for the third movie, if I'm correct, Richard Taylor went to China and had jump rings and closed uh, open rings uh, injection molded in yeah. China. And this is official Weta. Weta Workshop it's, chain it's, mail. Oh, it feels so, so very good. It's so lightweight. So this is Weta's solution to the problem of how do you make chain mail for a film? Um, a problem that has vexed every film production that needs chain mail. In ye olden days in Hollywood, chain mail used to be made with a special kind of knitting. In fact, when you see like Henry V with Olivier, the chainmail he's wearing is actually a heavy knit sweater, but with this big cable knit that looks like chainmail. And that's yeah. the way Hollywood's done it for years until this, which is super awesome. Yeah. And you have, I'm looking in front of me, some beautiful chainmail made in the simplest way possible. I'm well, kind of and, gobsmacked and this by this is it. this is light. Yes. This is a a fraction of this one. This it's, this it's, is it's like, like the like, thickness. This is like the weight of a couple of sheets of paper. This yeah. is so. This is EVA. It's, uh, it's like EVA foam. One mil yeah, EVA craft foam. foam that okay. you can get from Michaels and stuff like that. So I was looking. I was looking online. Uh, somebody, you, you know how you're. You have two different disjoint thoughts in your head. Yeah. So I was looking up knitting stitches, but I had just finished working on some armor, and I thought, right. well, I'm sitting there and I saw this stitch. And I'm like, that looks like chainmail. I'm like, wait a minute, these things can knit together. <gasps> So these are just single, long, yes. continuous pieces. Yeah, and you just can take, you do? Can you knit one for me? Let me yeah, see. Yeah, absolutely. So all we do is you just grab the first one, you lock that one into place, and then you just keep coming through. Oh, it's a little like doing a contractor's wrap on an electrical cord. Yeah. So the first one is really awkward. Right. And, and you you got to get through. But once you get a little bit of weight, you just oh. start linking them like this. And so. Right. Yeah. And as you go, this is you'll notice this this is darker. This is the same material, but. What happens is it starts arcing over because all of these want to be flat. So you just hit it with a heat gun, and then it flattens and it out, out. Oh. and then it and then the edges the edges kind of taper in, and it looks like hammered chainmail, like the way the rivets were, the way the riveted mail was done. The back looks different. Oh, I see. The back is quite different, isn't yeah. it? It's more like a cable knit kind of thing. Exactly. Um, but this but you is, can make a sheet like that. That took me like cos, fifteen minutes for cosplay. This is astounding. How I mean. We're always saying this on Tested that cosplay is an exercise in discomfort and pain and pinches. Yes. And this eliminates so much of that. Yeah. Uh, and this is laser cut, am I right? That's right. But you know, I'm I'm looking at possibly die cutting some of this. It all depends. I'm I'm gonna start selling it soon, hopefully. But, well, I'm uh, I'm curious about a cree cut printer. Might wait, also you know, I put it on instructables. Uh, yeah. and the way I'm working is is that like you're free to take my design and use it, just mm -hmm. don't sell. Mm -hmm. And um there's one guy who tried to creek cut and he goes, it's not perfect, but it works. And it's funny you mentioned that we're talking about that is because the laser I had set up wrong and it Ooh, ended yeah, up kind yeah. of doing these little flashes and it did these oh, nicks. It was but over, you, over cranked. Exactly. But when you heat it up, it looks like beaten up mail. So in the end, it was one of these like, oh, that's a happy mistake. And I kind of put that into some of my mail now. So I don't have to break it down anymore. It's already broken down when I put it together. Wow. That is really beautiful. Uh, and, now you also have, uh, what do you call a male gorget? Is that what it is? You know, is there's it? that or an Avental. Okay. Is another thing that I've looked at, um, and I'm probably saying it wrong. I, I I like the way these things look. I don't necessarily know how to speak the language. But this is this is um, getting some actual form out of it. Yeah. Like a, like a piece of chain. Wait, so the big difficulty with it is how do you stitch it together? Um, yeah. And it looks like it would be very forgiving in terms of being able to create a whole garment out of it. Yes, yes. Well, we've, we've actually taken a scale mail version of this and done stuff for this uh, company called Make Fashion. Okay. And uh, with Make Fashion, we made a dress out of it and we're gonna look at doing that. There's another thing that we tried that was so cool is we laser cut some leather. 
Okay. And um, it is tough as you would you would not believe. Right. So oh my god, this would be amazing out of leather. So and the, the thing is is that when you do it out of leather too, one thing that we're looking at is if we do scale mail, we can make a mortar bike jacket mm -hmm. that breathes. Ooh. But it's leather, so it allows you to skid if you need that oh. skid. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um I have this thing I want to try before we're before we're wrapped here. Yeah. Um I want to try to do a little paint treatment on this. Well, this is you know this is part of me bringing it to you because oh, okay. I can I can I can design and build this stuff. But yeah. when it comes to painting and making it breaking it down, I really suck at it. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> first up and foremost, I have a couple things I want to try. I'm going to grab a couple sheets of paper to protect the workbench. Mm -hmm. Um but let me just set up a couple things. So the main thing I was just thinking was about trying a kind of a of a dry brush. So I've got some. Um, and before, I know you're going to paint it as is. Yeah. But would you ever consider painting these first individually, or? Um, you know, certainly that's that's certainly feasible. That's certainly feasible if you lay those out here. Go ahead and let's uh, put out a couple. If you laid those out, I'll give them yeah, a those, quick uh, hit of silver. Because I think that the fact that their base is black actually works in their favor. There we go. I know I'm not wearing a dust mask. I'm just doing a little spritz. Yeah. Go easy on me. Okay, so there's that. And to be honest, I actually feel like that probably is gonna look okay, but it doesn't get sh quite shiny enough. Right. And also, I like the fact that the base is black, and that actually could end up lending some interesting. Uh, well, the you know, where the silver shows up on top, and the, yeah, because the the dirt always goes in the pockets, which is where you, it's going to be hard to get the paint to. Exactly. So I'm just thinking about trying a. And, whoops, I forgot to take the plastic off my brush. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm dumb. All right, here we I'm go. I'm not the only one who does stuff like this. This nope. is. It, it, I was like, why isn't it spreading? Okay. I always so. like watching other people's mistakes because it makes me feel more human. <laughs> so immediately, oh my, it's right? just a stipple. Yeah. And this is a this is a lacquer, so it's drying almost immediately. And we get all that wonderful variance, and you see it, right? That looks yeah. totally genuine. Yeah. Oh my god, it's well, crazy how light it's this just, is. It's just it's brighter, but like you've got the the mm -hmm. wet ass, so it just yeah, we're getting there. So these guys, yeah, they did a, uh, I think they started out with the ring slightly silver and they do a thing where after it's assembled, they dip it in ABS glue to kind of set the whole thing. Right. Um, but this is, I'm quite happy with how this is looking. This is, um, let's do a little heavier here mm -hmm. and try it like, yeah, I mean. That's no, so simple. Look at that. We're getting some real. Yeah. Well, I like the fact that it's varying too. Like you, uh -huh. you always have the people have like, it's, it's like you get that plastic toy, the paint's perfect, or it's just like it's flat because of the. Exactly, you need that variance. This looks great. That is awesome. Oh man, cosplayers watching this are very excited. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Um, ben, this is beautiful. So you are going to be doing hopefully some manufacturing and selling of this. I'm hoping so. What I'm gonna do is I got a laser cutter and a few friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna make some short runs and see if people wanna buy it. And then uh, you know, go from there. If there's enough interest, then who knows? Maybe a die cutter or get somebody to, to make some more stuff for us, but you know, go from there. You might also consider um, figuring out how to make a shirt like the pattern yeah, yeah. of exactly how to make a shirt and where to stitch it and sell those for like 10 bucks. Well, right now with this guy here, there's different lengths and it's all like, it's all just different lengths in a, in a finished piece, but right. like, I've already got a kit for this. That's great. That's really, really cool. Dude, yeah. I love innovations like this. This is where the rapid manufacturing revolution yeah. uh, gets really exciting because yeah. it's literally trivial to cut this out on a laser cutter and the results are like something, I swear, like when the Weta Workshop people see this, they'll be like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. um, have you tried, for instance, like a, a denser foam that's with smaller rings? I, we, I haven't, we've tried a little denser foam and we find that going past about three millimeter, this is about two millimeter foam. Right. Going, going up to three is about where you get, where it lays flat, at least at this ring density. Okay. But we will be trying some smaller rings and stuff. But I, I made this because, well, one is, is that this is, you'll notice that when you hit it with a heat gun, it shrinks a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yep, so yep. you got to keep that in mind. I'm not sure what the percentage is. 
But we gotta, I, you know, I'll have to try some smaller stuff because this was me kind of taking a shot in the dark and then seeing some of the other chain. Yeah. It's obviously a lot more dense. I don't know if I can get that density, but I can definitely get that size. So my rings are like, you know, I just have to take the inside diameter, make that the outside diameter and, and go. But again, with the laser cutter and stuff, like you're saying with rapid manufacturing, I scale it. The iterations are five trivial. minutes later. Yeah. Oh, dude, that is freaking awesome. Get these some chain mail and make some soon. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you.